Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to share with you the work of Christophe Jacquot. He is a photographer and he is a very talented photographer who I've spoken about before on here. His work is very lonely and cold and we all know I love lonely and cold things. I want to talk about what I find interesting about his work. So let's enjoy it. Let's experience it with our eyes, our heads, our shoulders, our knees, and the back part of our knees. Here we are on his profile, and if you scroll through his feed, you notice a few things. One, that there is a cohesiveness to his feed through threads that are found throughout all of his photos. Even though he shoots different scenes, even though he goes to many different places, it feels very connected, it feels very intertwined. I think that's fantastic. As we go through his photos, I want to talk about what makes those things feel cohesive, as well as all the other interesting things about him. Here's a photo that I find interesting because it is of a tunnel. He takes photos of tunnels a lot. Tunnels that look just like this. It could be the same exact tunnel. I don't know. But what he does with this subject, and he does this with many other subjects as well, is he shoots these subjects from every different conceivable angle, seemingly. <laughs> he squeezes the orange for everything it's worth, making the juice come out into his eyes. And I love this one because it's a completely different take on the tunnel that, uh, than what he has been doing. Normally, he's much closer to the tunnel from everything I've seen. In this case, he's quite far away. He looks like he's in a canyon floating in the air almost a uh, great distance away from the warm light coming from this tunnel. Another thing that he does with his work is he uses warm points of light to contrast against the cool in the photo. And there's a lot of cool. <laughs> there's a lot of snow. There's a lot of desolateness and loneliness. There are a couple of other lights coming off of cars that are driving through this mountain pass. Uh, there is headlights that are cooler than the warmth of the tunnel. One of the things that the headlights do is, is of course, provide context to the fact that there are cars there, but also provide context, con context to the fact that these cars are going around the contours of a mountain. You get a sense of where you are. You get a sense of your placement in the world through these little tricks that he's using, these techniques. You can see it lighting up the side of the mountain and the snowy roads uh, and how snowy the mountain is and how snowy the roads are. You get a sense in all of this blackness that there are a couple of people around, but his photos feel very lonely. Even when he uses people in his photos, they tend to feel quite lonely. And I think that's interesting. I think that working with people in a way that still promotes this feeling of loneliness is something that's that can be uh, an interesting technique to go after. Whenever you're taking photos in cities, perhaps you're a street photographer, for example, you want to get a sense that there's a lot of people around, there's a crowd. In his case, he works with a single person or maybe a couple of people separated or no people at all, but overall you get this feeling of loneliness with his work. And another thing about that photo, very quickly before we move on, is the extreme minimalism that you experience. Everything else in the scene is black. There's no detail, except for those three points of light. If we move to another photo, we see a scene of a village with houses scattered about. We have a church on the left-hand side, steeple shooting up, mountains in the background, tall, steep mountains, cliffs. Maybe you could find a mountain goat. Do they live in those climates, or is it only warmer climates? Anyway, I digress. On the uh, Throughout the photo, you have these houses scattered about in ways that create an interesting geometric quality. If we look to the right side of the frame, we see a house with a single point of warm light coming out of it. Once again, the point of warm light. There's another uh, point of light just to the right of it but it's a little bit different than that light. It doesn't 
compete with it in a weird way. And the scene is very dark, cold, looks like nighttime. He shoots a lot at night. He also shoots in the day of villages, these types of villages. But then he goes to urban environments. We'll get to those in a second. Here's another shot of a village that's similar but different. We have two points of warm light much closer to the camera. We have some houses, a path running through the middle of those houses. We have snow covering the ground uh, to immense levels. <laughs> the sky is this muted blue color. We have snow flying in front of the camera in an intense fashion, which adds a level of drama to his photos. Uh, you see it all throughout his work. One of the things that people will do if they're trying to take a photo of the snow with a scene in the background, meaning get the snow in the close-up snow, I mean, in the shot, is they'll pop a flash off. And this is fun, but it creates a rather stark feeling. In this case, it's much more subtle. I'm curious how he actually does it so well. Is it just the fact that there is so much snow flying around, pelting you in the eyeballs? Or is it some other camera technique? I'm not sure, but I think it's fantastic. Once again, a feeling of loneliness. There's nobody around in this case. You get the sense that there are people around in the houses, but that they're not to be seen. All of this stuff affects us on a subconscious level. It's interesting because I like cold loneliness. I have a love-hate relationship with dark, uh, cold, snowy places. I've always loved going out in the rain when it's cold, for example. Uh, going out in the snow when it's cold. That's like, that's like level two of that sort of obsession. But I have sort of a love-hate relationship because I went out to take my dog out last night. We had a big snowstorm. And... I thought I was going to have a panic attack because of how cold it was. I did not. I survived. But as I was running, I felt a breeze and I was like, I have to get inside. This is not good. Uh, so there's an interesting juxtaposition of, of pain, perhaps, of discomfort against the happiness of being in such a wonderful feeling rich environment that I think is interesting. And he captures that in his work here. If we move down, we'll see more photos of single houses, but also villages. Uh, we'll see, uh, in this case, we have a photo of a house sitting in the middle of intense mist, very foggy, very moody, very nighttime, almost night, perhaps. Blue clouds all around. Uh, when I say clouds, I mean like a thick blanket of clouds that extends to the ground, such as fog. This house is sitting up on a hill, has power lines attached to it. He likes to use power lines, by the way. There is three, There are three or four points of light coming out of this house, warm points. And it, pre it creates this feeling of not just visual warmth, but emotional warmth. This is a place of refuge in the midst of all of this cold. He leans on that feeling a lot, and I think that's quite interesting as well. There are these huge trees shooting up in the background all around the house. Makes you feel like you're in a wooded area. Lots of context. As I scroll down, we see more photos of tunnels. Example, that's a different tunnel, though. This tunnel is more of like a rocky tunnel. It doesn't look like a tunnel you would necessarily drive through, maybe one you would walk through. Beautiful. I want to move down to some of his urban stuff because his urban stuff is quite different than his rural stuff. That's the hardest word in the English dictionary for me to say, by the way. It's very busy with elements, but he organizes it into cohesion and a poetic composition. This is something that you see throughout his work as well. The taking a lot of elements sometimes and organizing them into cohesion, but also taking a minimalistic amount of elements and organizing them into cohesion. He's very dynamic in that sense. I've described a lot of photographers that I've spoken about as raw and organic in the way that they frame their photos. 
This is very much an opposite of that. It's elegant and poetic and well thought out. In this case, we have a single person, repeating on that theme, walking across the road in New York City, a uh, red light directly above his head. He's right in the middle of the road. We see a chaos of, of urban elements around my wife's knees. Bless you. She said, thank you. She's kind in that way. <laughs> there are lights from all of the uh, from all over the place in the scene. There are lights attached to trees as it is Christmas time. There's a giant parking sign with a yellow light coming off of it. Lots of a flurry of lights, if you will, amidst the flurry of snow. It's right in front of the camera. This is one of the greatest examples of the way he handles snow in front of the camera. Uh, it's it's just a tapestry of snowflakes or you know the bigger versions the collections of snowflakes the little snowballs falling and mixed in with a tapestry of all the other lights in the scene and it's very beautiful his his style is very fine art which i'm i believe he would describe himself in that way here's another photo he likes to do a lot uh, you really catch on to themes throughout his work i think that's one of his strengths is his ability to take photos of different thematic collections of elements in ways that are the same but different, and it promotes this cohesiveness. I also admire, very quickly, I also admire his ability to go out in the snow when it's cold, when it's uncomfortable, and take photos consistently to challenge himself in that way. Now, perhaps he's passionate about going out in the snow, so it's easier for him. But perhaps it is an uncomfortable situation for him to go out in the snow and wander around and his toes are getting a little bit nippy. Maybe he does it for the challenge. Who's no, who knows? But I think it's interesting nonetheless that he's willing to do that consistently. We have another photo of uh, some rooftops in New York City. The quintessential rooftop uh, water tower experience. But there's like four of these things scattered throughout. We have a black... Uh, set of shadows on the bottom half of the frame flying around in cohesive elegance. The buildings are black is what I'm saying. They have a blackish quality to them, very shadowy. And then in the background, almost split in half in the scene, but in a weird zigzaggy kind of way, we have a warm cityscape. Lots of warm lights contrasting against the coolness. We have snow on top of the... Um, buildings. We have snow on top of the water towers. We have buildings being chopped off, whether by fog or by the top of the frame. Beautiful, poetic framing. Once again, as we scroll further down, we see another urban shot. I think this is quite interesting. We have a shot of Times Square, a single man walking. Ah, he is alone. He is depressed. I don't know. I can't speak to his emotional state. I don't have any data to back that up. But he is walking towards the main tower in the middle of Times Square that you always see when the ball drops. He is uh, he, he's in a nice pose. He has his hand in his pocket. You can see a little bit of separation from his arm and his body. He Oh, another thing about him is the photographer we're speaking about today is he frames people very well, beautiful expressions. Maybe they're mid-stride, maybe they're, in this case, mid-stride from the back, but you can see them in an interesting pose that doesn't feel odd or awkward. Uh, he frames them against the rest of the world in a way that does not feel distracting, uh, painful to look at for the eyes. But we see signs all about, it's a vertical frame in this sense, in this case, which is different than a lot of the stuff he does. He shoots a lot of horizontal, I believe. I'll have to double check that when I go back to his feed, but I think I seem to see a lot of horizontal. In this case, he shot vertical in a quite tight lens, so everything feels quite polished and on top of each other, as opposed to if he was using a wider lens. That's something that probably promotes his elegant poetic quality. But we have these signs scattered all about, a bunch of elements organized beautifully. Uh, we have the 
lights from the Times Square signs. And we see Toshiba, which means that that evening was sponsored by Toshiba. And so is this podcast. I don't use them for any of my creating. I don't own one, but the presence of it in the world is here for emotional support. So sponsored by Toshiba. Uh, Yeah, great. Okay, so if we move down back into some village shots, I just want to touch on a few more village shots. Here's a good shot of a single car. (laughs) Ha ha ha. Driving down the road towards us, we see snow, a blanket of snow, windswept across the road in motion, that idea. We see snow all around. There's a haze above the ground from the snow, uh, around the snow, that lets us know that the wind is sweeping the snow. We have houses scattered about once again. Loneliness, but there's still people around. Interesting. He uses power lines. He's not scared of power lines, like I said. He doesn't accentuate the coldness so much in this photo as he does in other photos with what I'm assuming would be post-processing. Let's see if we can find one where he does, because I think it's quite interesting when he does that. I'm going to move up to the top, I think, actually. Let's see. What's one we haven't looked at that involves that feeling? So he accentuates the feeling of coldness in the scene through post-processing. The good thing is he doesn't have to do that because considering these snowy European environments he finds himself in, it's pretty easy to make a scene feel cold just by taking a photo, but sometimes he'll accentuate it. And I wonder if he's accentuating the feeling of being there, what he feels like when he's there. Maybe not visually, but how it feels. Here's a good example. This one's taken at night. It feels quite cold. Uh, Probably the scene has provided a tremendous level of blueness and coldness for him, but perhaps he post-processed it to have a bit more of a cool tone to it as well. We have a single point of light coming off of a house with a chimney in the middle. These houses are very aesthetically pleasing too. Uh, We have a chimney in the middle. The light is coming off of the... Uh, window on the left hand ish side of the house sort of a zigzag quality to the house which is interesting we have a single person walking ah he is sitting or he is walking in a position where there is a light shining down on him that is bluer than the light in the house interesting he seems to repeat that as well this idea of a cooler light and a warmer light this person is just walking through the snow who knows where he's going alone hopefully he feels full inside though like you know he's he has like community around him but that he is physically alone but anyway loneliness abides in this photo uh but this is an example like i said of making a photo feel very very cold in a lot of different ways this can be done through shooting in snow in a cold environment obviously but through post-processing you can create a feeling you can create an immersive quality of coolness you can, and this is whether it's physical coldness, like what you would experience on your skin if you went out in a cold environment, but also emotional coldness. I think that's fascinating that you can play with that in the visual arts realm. And you can do it in different ways and, you know, like music and that sort of thing as well. But in this case, um, he accentuates that quality beautifully. I think that's it. Okay. It's a good spot. That is it for this one. I don't think I have to, but I will encourage you to check out his work down below. He's a phenomenal photographer. I like every single one of his photos that I see in my feed. He's prolific in that sense. Everything he takes is so fantastic. Uh, There are a lot of photographers that I see that are good. They take some bangers. He takes infinite bangers, as the youth say. So I would love to hear about artists that you think would be a good fit for one of these video slash podcasts as well. I got some recommendations in the last one. Thank you for that on the way. Goodbye.